Hello everyone. Welcome to this video in which I am going to take a small pond quiz. It has 20 questions and the time limit is 20 minutes. Some of you must be familiar with this interface. This is nothing but our My IMS portal. And what I'm going to do is, uh, this is quantity aptitude uh, quiz four that I'm going to try and take. I will keep on talking about the approach that I'll be using for each of the questions. We'll also show you the rough work that I will be doing. And I will try to do it the way I would be doing it in an exam so that you get to know, okay, what are the things that uh, people who tend to score better do while they're actually in a test. So let's get started. So I have my setup ready. On the left-hand side, you will be able to see the questions. Uh, the part which generally displays the number of questions that you have attempted, that part will not be visible because I've reduced the window size. On the right-hand side, you will see a blank page. So think of it as the four side sheets that you get in the exam, wherein I'm going to do my rough work. So let's start. Let's begin our test right away. Okay, so this question says, uh, deposit of 25,000 in a bank for a period of two and a half years. If rate of interest is 12% compounded half yearly, so that becomes 6%. And this is uh, 2.5 years. So this is basically five periods is what they're talking about. So the calculation will look like uh, 25,000, which is the principal. And uh, one plus six upon 100. And this we are going to raise to five. Okay, so it's a calculation which looks uh, a little painful. Uh, let me see if I can think of maybe a faster way to do it. 6% of 25,000 or we'll try and see if we can approximate this. 6% of 25,000. So that is 250 into 6. Uh, so 250 into 6 is 1500. Right? So 1500 anyway you're going to get in each of these periods. And there are 5 periods like that. So 1500 into 5, 7,500. So definitely my answer is going to be more than 32,500 because 25,000 plus 7,500 at least is what you're going to get. So that uh, gives us third, more than 32,500 and I can see there's only one option. So what I'll do is I'll just go with it uh, right away without giving it much of a thought. Uh, Sheila completes 25% painting on the first day. The next day she completes twice the percentage as on the previous day. How many days does she take to complete the paint? Okay. Now she has done 25% on the first day. The next day she completes twice the percentage on the previous day. So that is uh, 50%. Right. Uh, how many days does she complete? How, uh, she take to complete the paint. Okay. I'm not able to kind of through what the question is exactly trying to say just going to skip it for now we'll come back to it later why is the simple interest on x okay z is the simple interest on y for the same period of interest rate relation between x y and z okay so if i consider y to be let's say 10 and uh, x is equal to 100 basically i'm taking rate of interest as 10 percent and uh, Z is the simple interest on Y for the same period and same interest rate. So if I take Z, 10% uh, of 10 is what it will become. So that is going to be one. So this is the relationship that we should have, which is basically Y square is equal to ZX. So I'm going to go with option two. Okay, a geometry question. Uh, triangle ABC is an equilateral triangle. Okay, if the area of square with side EF Okay, so this particular square that they're talking about is 24. What is the area of square of side DC? Okay, if the area of square is 24, right? Its uh, side is going to be root 24, right? So that is the side of the square. And uh, they're asking area of square of side DC. So for that, I'll have to find DC first. DC is the height, so root 3 by 2 times the hypotenuse and then square of this will give me the area so that will give you 3 upon 4 into 24 should be 18 so we'll go with that as the final answer in a poultry farm there are three kinds of birds okay so broilers indian chicken and english chicken uh, 200 broilers 600 indian chicken and 300 ec 20% uh, of this 25% of this and one third of this so these are egg laying so this is 150 and this is what uh, 40 
uh, approximately what percent of the total number did not do this okay so how many are doing this let's we can quickly find that out so this is 290 out of uh, 1100 right so 290 out of 1100 are doing it so the others are not doing it so if i multiply this by 100 uh, i'm going to see 290 upon 11 so this should give us 26 or so 74 is what we are looking at. So go with that. Two third of three fourth. Okay, so three, three cancel. This two and two will cancel. So seven upon four of X is seven upon five of 25. So X should be 20. Pretty straightforward question. Nothing much to calculate. Two positive integers, one of which is three fifth the other. So the difference of their squares is 16. So clearly this is not 3 fifth. Uh, this is 3 fifth, not 3 fifth. Okay, so there's only one option I can see, which is actually 3 fifth. Uh, difference of their squares is 16, 5 square 25 minus 9. So let's go with this. Ages of A and B are in the ratio 6x to 5. Some of their ages is 44. So 6x and 5x. So that's 11x equal to 44. So that gives me x is equal to 4. So their ages are 24 and 20. Ratio after eight years, so to basically do an addition of eight on both sides. So that should give me eight as to seven. Seven meter wide path surrounds a circular lawn of diameter 252. Okay, so if B is equal to 252, I can actually calculate pi D. So that's 22 into uh, seven into 321 into six. So 36 into 22, 72 into 11. So 792 is the, uh, oh, sorry, I didn't read the question very carefully. Okay. So we are not interested in circumference. Okay. So these kind of mistakes also tend sometimes happen where you don't read it very carefully. Um, D is equal to 252. So R is equal to 126. All right. And uh, the path is seven meter wide. So that will give you a radius of 126 plus 7, so 133. And you have to find the area. So 22 by 7 into 133 square minus 126 square. Okay. So A square minus B square. So I'm going to do that. Uh, the difference is 7 and the summation is 259. So my final answer should be 22 into 259. Uh, 22 into 9. So 198, 110 plus 19, so that's 129, and 44 plus 12, so that should be 56. I'm going to go with 5698 here. So, so far, I've not really seen how many questions I've solved. I'm just going um, as, as, as fast as I can. A man walks W miles in H hours and write R miles in the same time, average speed. Uh, so that uh, basically his, uh, his time is same. So, uh, is traveling W and then R. So uh, W upon H plus R upon H, right? That is the time that he's going to take. So if the time is same, we can basically just do average, right? So this should be R plus uh, W upon two. I don't see it here. Maybe I'm reading the question incorrectly. I'll come back to this. Least three digit number divided by seven, six, and five will leave a remainder of two. Okay, so seven, six, and five LCM should be two, 210. Uh, leave a remainder of two, so to do with plus two, so two and two. Okay, uh, 50 people, 20 are good at math, let's say 17 are good at English, 12 are good at both. So that will give you this kind of a figure. Percentage of people who are neither good at uh, any of this. So 20 plus 5, 25, meaning there are 25 people outside. So it should be 50%. LCM of two numbers. So HCF, uh, one of the numbers is 42. The other number is 7 into 294. So 6 into 4, 6 into 9. So 49 should be the other number. So 49 and 42, so the gap is 7. I think we could have solved it without uh, this also. Because there's a property that the difference will also be divisible by the x. Seven oranges, eight apples, the two fruits picked are of the same type. So either two oranges or two apples or two bananas. 
and uh, total there are 22 so that is 20 c2 7 c2 is 21 uh, 28 and 10 uh, 20 into 19 upon 2 so this is going to be 190 uh, some 59 upon 190 i hope i've calculated it right let's go ahead let me test the rough work uh, conical vessel whose height is the same as the base i don't like mensuration generally so i just want to skip it uh, we are doing okay on time i think we still have 10 minutes to go so this 3a square plus b square on a square plus 3b square so you'll get a cube plus 3b square a is 3a square b plus b cube so if i take everything on one side so a cube minus 3a square b plus 3ab square minus b cube equal to zero so that means this is a minus b cube which is equal to zero so that should give me a minus b equal to zero right uh, or a is equal to b basically so that is uh, option five okay a and b are positive numbers uh, so this will become a plus b square a minus b square upon a square minus b square equal to four so a square plus 2ab plus b square so 2a square and then that 2ab will get cancelled plus 2b square upon a square minus b square equal to 4. so 2a square plus 2b square is 4a square minus 4b square and uh, that is going to give you minus 2a square is equal to minus 6b square all right so if i further calculate a square is equal to 3 times b square so a is uh, and they are positive real positive numbers that's what they have given which uh, essentially means that a is going to be larger right so a is greater than b we'll go with the first one 25 percent or 40 percent of 1480 so one fourth of four tenth of 1480 and that is 148 35 15 and 2400 okay so this zero will get cancelled um let's go with seven upon 26 5 and then three so this is 18 into 7 right 18 into 7 is what 126 so clearly a is greater than b again we'll go with the first one Uh, a is radius of circle having perimeter 28 okay so 2 pi r is equal to 28 so that gives us uh, mm, r as uh, 98 upon 22 or 49 upon 11 okay mm, that's interesting B is a radius of circle having area 314. So if pi r square is equal to 314, or let me take this as 3.14 then because that would be a little better. And that gives you r equal to 10, right? So on one side, you have r as 49 by 11. Um, they have said that take pi as 3.14. Is it necessary for the first case also? Not required. 3.14 double should have been 6.28. So 28 upon 6.28. Does it really help? I don't think so. I think B should still be greater than A. I'm going to go with answer option 2 in this case. Okay. I, I, I'm not very sure. Maybe if let's say there is some time available, we can come back to this question if i just do subtraction i'll get a equal to 6 and b equal to minus 2 so a is greater than b okay i don't uh, want to submit test i by mistake would have clicked on that okay let's see what uh, so we still have about uh, 
five minutes to go. I think there are a couple of I think two or three questions. Twenty five percent of a painting on the first day. So let's say the painting is to basically draw hundred uh, shades, right? So twenty five is what she has done on the first day. The next day she has completed twice, which is fifty. Uh, how many days does she take? I am not very sure because uh, it's not necessary that every day because otherwise. Whatever she has done on this day, the next day she will do uh, that entire thing, right? So hundred percent of it, but uh, not not very clear as to what the language is trying to say. Let me maybe read it again. Twenty five percent of a painting on the first day. The next day she completes twice the percentage as on the first day. Uh, so fifty percent of this of the painting. So I'm just going to. Go with cannot be determined in this case. Let's see, maybe my interpretational error might be there. Mm. Okay, W miles in ten hours. I'm just going to take an example here. Let's say ten miles in two hours. So speed is basically five miles per hour, and then writes another say twenty miles maybe in the same time. So that is two hours. So that is ten miles per hour. The average speed for the entire trip. So the total distance is thirty, and the total time is four. So thirty upon four. So I should be getting seven point five, right? So wherever I'm basically getting seven point five, or I can basically just do W plus uh, R upon two H, which I missed the first time I saw it. R plus W upon two H looks pretty good. I'll go with that, and let's try the fifteenth question now. Conical vessel whose height is same as the base radius, so h is equal to r. It's a cone. Uh, the content of this vessel transfer to a hemispherical bowl. Okay, the water occupies only half of the volume. Uh, okay, what is the ratio of the radius of the cone and the? Uh, so this is completely filled with water. So the volume is going to be one by three. Pi r square h and r is same as h, so this will be one by three pi r square. Right? Let's call it r one. And uh, this, what happens is when you put it in that hemisphere, it occupies half the volume of that bowl. So two by three pi r cube, but uh, half of it, right? Because hemisphere first of all itself is formula wise, if you see, it is half of the entire uh, sphere that you have. So this gets cancelled, uh, and of course one upon three, one upon three will get cancelled. Pi pi get cancelled, and you have cube on both of them. So it should be same. It should be one s two one. Still have what some time remaining. Just going to kind of revisit that one question that I had doubts in. Uh, radius of circle having perimeter twenty eight. So two pi r equal to twenty eight. Pi r equal to fourteen. And twenty-two by seven r equal to fourteen, so r should be equal to ninety-eight upon twenty-two or forty-nine upon eleven, which went pretty okay. And uh, but this is in uh, meters, right? So this is going to be in meters. I think there's a catch in that question. Uh, this is centimeters. So if I calculate pi r square and uh, pi as three point one four, I get r is equal to ten, but this will be in centimeters. And this is in meter, right? So then A should be greater than B. I'm going to go with the first one. Okay. We still had like decent, uh, I think, slightly close to two minutes uh, remaining on this. Let me submit this and see how much we score. Okay. I think we have completed everything. All right. Let me submit and see what the outcome is. Okay, so let's do one thing. Let's kind of review the test also. I've scored eighteen on twenty, uh, and definitely there's some mistakes. So two mistakes, but we'll see what those mistakes are. So this is a good thing about uh, the dashboard. You can of course review the questions that you have got wrong. So this question, this the question on painting, right? I maybe didn't read it very carefully. Let me see what it is. And uh, there were. There was one more question. Oh, wow. oh, okay, okay. I in a hurry. I think I didn't write this properly. Okay, so there are two mistakes that I made. One was, of course, the interpretational error in that question, and uh, the other one was uh, in a hurry. I was I didn't read this carefully enough, 
and made a mistake right so these things do happen in the actual exam also and what i have done is you can definitely kind of extrapolate this to uh, let's say when you're taking cet which has close to what 50 questions in quant and maybe you would be spending close to about 45 50 minutes on it uh, you have to be that fast wherein you are able to at least go through all the questions and uh, if not attempt all the questions right so here i attempted 20 got 18 correct and 90 percent is generally a very good accuracy if you're taking seat right so i would suggest that you try to do a lot of these the, the exercise that we have done right wherein you take questions try to see what uh, how can you quickly get to the answer it's not necessarily that every time you spend a lot of time on the question some questions for example if you notice i've spent just about 18 seconds right uh, whereas in some questions you will realize that i'm going a little over the board so for example the first one took a little more time and that is definitely something that will happen but you always have to figure out how do i balance it out right? so as long as there's balance between the time that you take for the difficult questions and the time that you take for the easier ones and overall you're able to attempt close to about uh, maybe 45 plus or 40 plus whatever is your target attempt uh, with decent 85 to 90 percent accuracy i think you're good to go so i hope this video has helped if you're not subscribed to the channel make sure that you do it uh, we hope to bring more uh, content to you guys uh, which will help you to prepare for CET and crack it. So I hope this video has helped. I'll see you guys in the next one.